Today is the Google Day in AI. They just released Gemini 3 model, which we already covered on the channel. And in this video, I am going to introduce you to their integrated development environment, which is AI powered and basically a fork of VS Code with a lot of bells and whistles. It is Google's anti-gravity. You can get it installed on Windows, Mac and Linux. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to get it installed on Linux. The steps are same for every operating system. For example, for Windows, all you need to do is to just download the XE and then next, next, and it should be all good to go. For Linux, though, you would need to follow these steps and it is available for various Linux flavors. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Also, please follow me on X if you're looking for AI updates without any fluff and without any uh, drama. I uh, regularly post there, so I would highly appreciate if you follow me along at that journey. So for the installation, let's get started. I'm going to use this Ubuntu system and it doesn't use, uh, doesn't use any local model. So you would have to mainly go with uh, you know, Google Vertex AI, which is a GCP or Google Cloud Platform, a model garden or through Google AI Studio. So I'm just going to first install it. And first let's get the repo. And you just need to run these commands. And we have added the repo. Let's update our system. I'm just copy pasting the commands from their page. And I will also drop the link in video's description. And while it updates it, look, this anti-gravity, the name is quite grand, by the way. It is their agentic development platform and they have just forked it from VS Code, um, just like VS Code and various other forks of VS Code, and there are plenty. It offers tab auto-completion, natural language code commands, and a configurable and context-aware con you know, agent, which I guess it's not something unique. We already have uh, seen it in a lot of other tooling. Now, in order to install anti-gravity, just run this apt install anti-gravity and it is going to install it on your local system. Um, the interface looks quite clean to me and also you can do some task uh, oriented approach to monitor agentic activity where you can see your artifacts and then it also gives you some of the verification results. Um, if you have um, an agent which you are running in your code editor or in your terminal. It also synchron synchronizes it. Plus you can also give your feedback as just to refine your experience. So interesting tool. Let's get it installed and then we will check it out. So as you can see that it is now installed. Now you can either run it through your command prompt like this from Linux or you could even just go here in the software center and then you can type anti-gravity and this is what it looks like. And this is our IDE which takes a bit of a time on the first loading. And then you can just check out some of the welcome screens that, you know, you, as, as I said, it's a fork of VS Code. So you can import everything from your VS Code or you could just start from fresh. Let's go with dark. I always go with a dark one. And then this is a bit of an interesting thing where it asks you, I mean, do you want agent driven development or agent assisted development or you review it? It's the same thing with a slight differences where agent takes control, but as they recommend, go with the agent assisted one. And then you can set your policy, whether you want to execute it in terminal or not. And then uh, how to, you know, review always pro uh, proceed request review so all of the controls which you can set up and then these are some of the key bindings and um, you would need to sign in with google so that you could also play around with the model so let me click here and then sign into the google with my email address and you can see that now i am logged in and then sometimes you just have to click to go back to your application and then you just need to accept this agreement. This is a, uh, and this is what it looks like in your terminal. And then you can select any existing workspace, like for example, if I click here, 
this is my workspace and I can start building on this code if I wanted to. So this is what it looks like and I'm just going to delete this. This is my previous one. Now I can just ask it um, create me uh, or maybe I can also switch to the control agent manager or code with an agent. So for example, if I just say here control E, it is going to open this agent manager. This is a workspace. You can start the conversation and we can just move it or you can add multiple agents there. So for example, and one more thing, sorry, you see that you can select your model from here. And it also offers this Anthropics model and GPT OSS, but these are from the GCP. Now you can go with planning or you could just go with the fast one. Planning is for the complicated tasks. So for example, if I ask it, create me a time machine and that's it. Now, because there is a lot of load there and I'm using the free version, there are a lot of throttling which is happening and you see that it immediately told me that I have already exceeded my quota limit because I have been using it like since morning like crazy. So I'm just going to go with this lower one to see if that one works or not. Let me a time machine. I think Google really needs to increase it, uh, this quota. They were really good before, but now it is throttling a lot. But thankfully, you see that this time it works. It has just thought for two seconds. It is building the foundation. And then this is what it looks like. You see, it is already creating it. I'm just going to say it says review. And I'll just say, okay, so it already finished. You, I'll just say proceed. It is proceeding. It has proceeded with the plan. It is thinking. It is executing the implementation. And this is all agent which is doing. And you see it is requesting the permission. So I'll just say accept. It is running it in my terminal now. And I'm just, and it is just creating all that node and everything. But you see that I don't have um, node installed. So hopefully it is going to install it. I'm just going to accept it again. I'm just going to dismiss this. And it has installed the node. It is now running it in terminal and I'm letting it run in real time so that you could also look at it. What is happening? Let's wait for it. And meanwhile, I would request you again to please um, follow me on X. I would highly appreciate and like the video and subscribe and become a member as that helps a lot. Thank you. Okay, so you see, I'll just say this is uh, just talking about that thing that which it is asking again and again. So I think Linux still doesn't recognize that, but it is running behind the scene as you can see. And then it has again, you see, it has terminated because it says there is overload on the model. Please try again later. I'm not going to, you know, bother about it, but I hope that you got the idea that this is yet another VS Code fork, but it is um, easier to use, I would say, relatively easier to use. But the good thing is that now we have so much choice out there, uh, which we can use in order to do more coding stuff with the power of AI. That's it. Let me know what do you think about this Google's anti-gravity. Please again like the video and subscribe as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.